Prior to viewing this video, make sure you have a good understanding of the different phases of GATE. For future reference, we'll be identifying each of these different phases by the abbreviations identified here. The goal for this video is to identify all the different motions that occur within the sagittal plane during a normal GATE cycle. While movement does occur in each of the three different planes, by far the most activity that occurs is in the sagittal plane. So let's start by looking at the foot and ankle and we'll work our way up. At the ankle we're interested in dorsiflexion and plantar flexion. Plantar flexion is represented below the horizontal line while dorsiflexion is above. As you can see from the graph we have two periods each of plantar flexion and dorsiflexion throughout the gait cycle. So let's take a look at when those occur. The amount of motion necessary at the ankle for normal gait ranges from about 10 degrees of dorsiflexion to approximately 20 degrees of plantar flexion. So let's use our left leg as our reference leg and begin with initial contact. As we approach initial contact, our ankle is basically in a neutral position. It quickly moves into plantar flexion during our loading response. Our tibia then translates forward over the foot, moving it from slight plantar flexion into maximal dorsiflexion. At this point, as we move to pre-swing, our ankle transitions back into a plantar flex position. As we transition into our swing phase, our ankle returns to a neutral or slightly dorsiflex position to avoid contacting the toes on the ground. As we reach the end of swing, our ankle returns to its near neutral position to get ready to accept weight again during initial contact. So we move from neutral to plantar flexed. into dorsiflexion, back into our plantar flexion two, and then into our dorsiflexion two. Now let's take a look at our foot. We're primarily interested in great toe extension. Extension is part of the windlass mechanism and helps the foot transition into a rigid lever so we can use it for propulsion. We need approximately 65 degrees of extension to have normal mechanics during gait. See if you can identify the increase in the arch during great toe extension on our right foot here during gait. As we transition into pre-swing, the arch of the right foot gets higher. So take a minute to observe motion in the ankle before we transition up to the knee. Our sagittal plane motion at the knee include flexion and extension. Similar to our ankle, our knee goes through two periods each where we're near full extension and where we're flexed. As shown by our graph, our areas of flexion occur during loading response and during mid-swing. So let's take a look. As our leg prepares to make contact with the ground, our knee nears a period of full extension. As we absorb shock from the ground, the knee flexes slightly to help during loading response. As our trunk travels over our knee and our foot, the knee is driven back into full extension. As we move towards the end of stance, Flexion at the hip and plantar flexion at the ankle will drive our knee to bend again. As we reach our mid-swing, our knee has reached its point of full flexion, about 60 degrees. The knee continues to transition back towards extension to prepare for initial contact with the ground again. So let's follow our knee. We have full extension at initial contact followed by flexion one at loading response. We transition into our second period of extension during terminal stance. And then we move into our period of second knee flexion during swing. The knee then returns to its initial position of near full extension. Next up is the hip. 
Again, we'll be examining hip flexion and extension. The pattern at the hip is a little bit easier to follow. We start with hip flexion and initial contact, slowly transition into hip extension, a terminal stance, and then return back to hip flexion during terminal swing. So as our limb swings forward, we find our hip in a position of maximal flexion as it gets ready for initial contact. We then begin a nice smooth transition from hip flexion into hip extension as the body translates forward over the foot. We reach our point of maximal extension at terminal stance, about 10 degrees. The hip then transitions back into a flex position, passing through neutral as it returns to its maximally flex position just prior to initial contact, 30 degrees. So you can follow the hip here as it moves through the gait cycle. So let's review what we've covered, starting with the ankle. Our neutral ankle quickly plantar flexes during loading response to help absorb shock. It then transitions slowly into dorsiflexion during the rest of stance. Just prior to pushing off and swing, our ankle will return to a plantar flex position. The ankle then returns to a slightly dorsiflex position to clear the foot during swing. Our knee starts in extension, quickly goes into a bit of slight flexion to absorb shock and then slowly returns to full extension prior to beginning to flex during terminal stance and throughout swing. Our hip is at maximum flexion of 30 degrees during initial contact. It slowly transitions into an extended position as our body goes forward and the leg moves behind it. The swing phase then allows our hip to return to its maximally flexed position just prior to initial contact. Before you can treat gait impairments effectively, you must have a thorough understanding of the motions that are expected during gait. So hopefully this video helps you fill in the sagittal motion piece of the puzzle.